it is my privilege and honor to introduce Dr. C. Omeshwaraji, who is our dear chairman of Sanskriti Foundation. He is a qualified engineer, graduating from NIT Warangal, the then RSC Warangal, and also did his post graduation from there. He also did an MBA from Usmani University and PhD from Andhra University. He worked with BHEL in a critical role and as an Indian Administrative Service Officer, served in combined Andhra for quite a few years in various critical positions. He was Special Secretary to the then combined Andhra Chief Minister. After his retirement almost a dozen over years ago, he has been very active in rendering his human services. So he was uh, he is on the a valuable contributor to NEP 2020 also. He has been a, an active educationist, and besides being a chairman of Sanskriti Foundation, he has been active in many other social platforms. It is always gives me as a co-convener of Sanskriti Foundation. A lot of times I interact with Dr. Sri Umameshwaraji. It's always an enriching and enlightening experience for me with his vast amount of administrative skills and the management skills. It is always an enriching experience, sir, to work with you. We always feel blessed and privileged to work with you, sir. So I request now Dr. Umameshwaraji to address the gathering. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rambabu, and also Vivek Modi and other friends. The topic that is uh, suggested for this suggestion, so this session was Dharma, the differentiation between Dharma and religion, and also a philosophical perspective about the whole issue. The subject is very vast, I must say. And uh, in condensing a matter like that, it is always the capacity of the person to condense and try to bring out the essence of it. So in saying a few words about this in the next half an hour or so, if I have left out some of the points that you felt as more important, I may be pardoned as my inadequacy of handling a very serious topic like this. Attempts would be made to improve upon that. You could point out them in the future. Having said that, what is dharma? Dharma is a word which has a large connotation in the Indian context. All of us know that there is no equivalent word in English to dharma. So therefore, a good number of authors used to use the word same dharma even in writing in English. But that's rightly so. In a simple word, one small definition that is given of dharma is, it is a code of honor. So code of honor means you are respecting yourselves by following that. You create yourself an honorable position by following that. It's a code of honor. Dharma rakshati rakshitaha, we have heard of all that. If you protect dharma, dharma will protect you. Now this dharma, has been sort of defined very variously. I have listed down some of these definitions actually. Dharma, as all of us know, is a Sanskrit word which simply is a path of righteousness. The classical meaning of Dharma is to hold, maintain, and keep. What to hold, maintain, and keep? To hold, maintain, and keep this universe, this society, this country at a lower level. In Hinduism, dharma means the behavior that makes the life and the universe, life and universe possible. So if dharma is there, it means life is available, sustained life is there, and the sustained universe also is there. So see the large implications of a simple word like dharma, which we start using in a very loose manner. With rutta in order, it's a Sanskrit word rutta, meaning order. 
in a moral law, it guides one's life when combined with spiritual discipline. When you are following dharma, you are also become slowly spiritually enlightened. Spiritual progress is a path, parallel process that happens while following dharma. One example I would like to take you is some of you might be aware of this. There is one Muni by name Kaushika. This is a story from Mahabharata. He had old parents. In the younger age, he felt he should become a sannyasa and do tapas. But old parents said, you know, we are old, you have to take care of us and all that. But he doesn't yield to that. And he is persistent, insisting on going as sannyasa. And he goes away from home and start doing tapas somewhere, very intense tapas, penance and all that. One day he was in that penance mode. Suddenly, there was one small uh, bird sitting on the tree. It drops. Its drops are falling on the head of the money who is sort of penancing. He gets very wild and angry. He looks at the bird because of his inherent capacity that is acquired. The bird gets burnt totally and it falls with ashes. Subsequently, a couple of days later, sannyasas, as you know, they take bhiksha from the grihasthas, from the householders. <laughs> he goes out for such bhiksha into one of those houses. The householder lady says, wait for some time. At that time, exactly, her husband also comes home and he, she was attending to his requirements. So in the process, there was a small amount of delay in meeting, giving alms to this bhiksha to this sannyasi. So when she comes out and is giving the bhiksha to sannyasi, the sannyasi also gets wilder and angry. Don't you know I am important enough to give bhiksha immediately once I requested to you? And he glares at her with anger. Then the lady quietly says, look, I am not that bird which you have burnt. You seem to have not understood what is dharma or what is spirituality. You go and go to Mithila, there is one dharma vyaha, yadha. Meet him. He will teach you whatever you have not been taught so far. So he goes, he is surprised. How does this lady, householder knows that, you know, this bird has been burnt by his looks, by taking an anger look at it. So he goes to the dharma vyaha, yadha. He is actually, he hurts, you know, people tell him about his greatness and all that. When he reaches him, he finds he is a butcher, actually. He is selling meat to people. So he is surprised how a butcher is such a knowledgeable person. And then he has been sent to this man by that lady. Notwithstanding all his capacity, he is not able to understand this. So, but he waits, the butcher says, kindly wait. Let me complete my job of responsibility to my customers first. I'll complete this and then I will we'll talk about this. So by evening, he takes him to his house. So then he asks, how is that you are a butcher? How is that all these things? It's my, it's my trade. It's my responsibility. You see, for some people, meat is a food. And I'm serving that. And I'm serving that with all sincerity, doing my duty, my dharma. That is my dharma. Now the lady, that lady has sent to you, sent to you here. That this man also knows that the lady has sent. So as if there is some sort of a telepathy. So these people by doing their dharma, attain simultaneously a high degree of spirituality, where you know they become a, a great souls. So then he realizes, when this man comes to home, the dharma vyaha, he sees his family, his children surrounds him. He tries to meet their small, small requirements. This man is surprised, the sannyasa is surprised. He just a simple householder is what he looks like. How does he get this capacity? That he explains later. And then he realizes the mistake he made of not attending to their parents originally. He might have attained some tapas, attained some capacity, but he has not really attained the spirituality needed to rise to higher level. He goes back home, starts serving their parents there. It is in Varaparva in Mahabharata. This is a great story narrated several times by several people in several contexts. As a lesson, you know, for people to reach those levels, you need, need any starting point. He's a butcher. He's not a Brahmin. But he rose to that level. So this tradition, this dharma in this country provided opportunities for everybody to grow. 
everybody who wants to grow and has an inherent capacity can grow there is no limitation for that to narrate this example this story is then generally repeated many times in other places so this is one you know people pray in rigveda pray to indra what do they say oh indra lead us on the path of ritha that is the, an order which maintains the universe on the right path over all the evils so people are respect, requesting they are not talking of giving me spiritual power and all that make us go on the right path right conduct that is the one so they are requesting gods to allow us to take us on the right path so it means the dharma as such when you talk any deeply it also has a component of spirituality in it you are not separately maintaining a spiritual core to attain that by doing dharma you are also attaining that spiritual capacity in you that's what dharma says see in hinduism dharma denotes behavior that are considered to be in accord with ritha that is the order and custom that makes life and the universe possible this includes duties rights laws conduct virtues and right way of living this these these are all the things that are included in dharma in a definition of dharma karada a great uh, rishi says in vaisheshika <coughs> he defines dharma as dharma is that strategy by which the material flourishing and supreme good or moksha is achieved it means material flourishing as well as supreme good moksha this moksha is as you know of the four purushadhas dharmaartha kama moksha ultimate thing is moksha even that is achieved through dharma by being dharma ramanuja acharya gives a small smaller definition dharma is nishreyasa sadhanam dharma hi nishreyasa sadhanam that is a sanskrit version dharma is the means to achieve the highest good now you see in these definitions anywhere spirituality is not there it is about the conduct of the individual dharma means it is all the time denoting directing us towards our conduct in mahabharata karna parva dharma he has been defined the word dharma is derived from dharma dharana or sustenance or sustain sustainable dharana sustains a society dharma sustains society that which has capacity to sustain is indeed dharma what is that which sustains society dharma sustains the society so people behave in a dharmic manner in a, as per the dharma society itself gets sustained the individual behavior contributes towards the community behavior we also talk about this some of these principles are incorporated in the philosophy that is narrated vyasti samishti ultimately parameshti when you go to you know then there are these uh, narrative he has adopted all these things he starts with individual but you move towards kutumb then you move towards society then you move towards your country then you move towards parameshti like west also uh, beyond universe you move towards parameshti these are all the level through which you move while doing the your own activity and and dharmic principles that's why actually you see in sangha they don't talk much about adhyatmika processes they talk about your conduct they insist on your character so that your conduct is such a manner it is in tune with the requirements of the society all that is explained in these things in uh, by definition one dharma also means a quality and in that sense it has no relation to the word religion which means a system of faith and belief actually when we see the difference between religion as such and dharma what it comes out is religion you have an objective of reaching a goal in religion individual goal individual sadhana so that you know you try to attain dharma the kama moksha dharma is the first one why it is first one adha kama these things have to be done in accordance with the dharma they are not independent they are mutually dependable variables so you do adha you, you earn money as per dharma you fulfill your desires and wishes as per dharma then of course with all these things finally you reach you want to reach moksha you have to go through these processes along with that parallelly we are also given you know four four stages of life brahmacharya garhasya vanaprastha and sanyasa so for reaching sanyasa you have to go through these three processes because you will know the life 
you will really get that vairagya to get that sanyasa you become sanyasa means you just become then become sanyasa by wearing a saffron cloth you have to have that vairagya what certain amount of detachment about whatever is happening surrounding you you have to attain that quality you have to completely go through the process of brahmacharya garhasya and then vanaprastha in the beauty it is grihastha ashrama beauty is that that is the one which sustains the brahmacharya as well as vanaprastha and the sanyasa also all the three other stages people are living they are they are supported by garhasya there has to be a householder to support a brahmachari for studies there has to be a householder so support is somebody in vanaprastha so support a sanyasi to do something good for the society so it means these are all the activities once you are conscious of these things you are on the dharmic path so this is what is actually required to be understood by all of us and also our instructors when we talk of dharma we are talking of our responsibilities we are talking of a code of conduct we are talking of certain amount of you know principles that are necessary actually bhagavad gita chapter 16 narrates qualities of daivik qualities and then asuric qualities there are certain qualities which are daivik nature those qualities are there as daivik qualities and then he says in certain other stanza asuric qualities he list down something like 25 qualities of daivik qualities all you know the general thing that we know about honesty sustenance integrity spiritually oriented all these things come under the daivik qualities asuric qualities is ego you do something only to satisfy your ego arrogance arrogance of wealth these are all the negative qualities that we would find in people are the asuric qualities so asuras are nothing but people with these qualities daivik qualities are there with people they, they are like like uh, devas they are the ones who guide the society so if you read bhagavad gita you get a, a detailed list of these qualities they can be listed down as asuric qualities and daivik qualities in chapter 16 and 17 you will get these details that is one so therefore what we are trying to understand in religion is another thing dharma is something like a code of conduct in terms of the word dharma is interchangeably used in the literature with the morality ethics but these two words fall short of the real meaning of dharma somewhat you know for purposes of discussion that may be okay morality ethics dharma dharma is on a pedestal unmatched uncomparable in any way in the literature which is so comprehensive for us to do some of these things so that is that is what you know <coughs> when you talk of religion actually religion as i said is what for us an individual goal want to attain some spiritual attainments an individual goal that i want to realize myself hindu religion or we call it as sanatan dharma has provided opportunities for people to grow to spiritual levels by going through certain practices similarly hindu religion is not a dogma what we know common in the common sense of all these pujas these rituals these festivals temple visiting these are all the paths to attain the moksha these are all the at some stage you purify yourself through these processes to do the sadhana to attain the ultimate goal of self realization in uh, brahma sutras of madrayana he says what are the qualities required for a sadhaka he, those qualities you attain through a rigorous effort so that you become eligible to study the self realization aspect in uh, kathopanishad another very good example that we have there is this nachiketa story in kathopanishad nachiketa's father does a big uh, yagam for attaining world fame or something like that as a process of that homam he gives away whatever he has donates everything his son 12 year old a very brilliant and uh, well read well studied in instar nachiketa he watches his father giving away certain cows which don't yield any more milk they have reached a stage of sort of you know abandon <clears throat> so he starts wondering 
why my father is giving away these things in donation that, that will does a lot of harm to me he should not be giving these type of things then he goes and asks the father why are you giving away these things father thinks you know he just doesn't bother a 12 year old kid is asking something don't bother about it nachiketa asked once twice and thrice the third time when he asks father gets angry father says I, he, the boy asks whom are you giving me because he's giving away everything whom are you giving me the, the third time the father says i am giving you to emma so the boy goes to emma puri to meet lord emma emma is not in the house at that time or dorame hai but he is around the tour <laughs> of picking up the souls so this boy waits there for 3 days in his house after he comes back the other people in his house yama's house tell him this young boy a brahmin boy he has been waiting for you for 3 days so yama feels sad sorry for that i'm sorry and all that he attends to his small fault in that game and all that but i'm happy i i give you 3 varas through boons you can uh, ask whatever you want three boons the first boon the boy says when i go back my father should accept me unequivocally he should not have any malice in his mind to accept me as his son when i go back done yama says done is given then he says people after that they say go to swarga and all that what is this swarga you tell me something about this then he he tells him how to reach a swarga what type of effort what type of yajna is to be done all those things that yajna is also called in the katopanishad nachiketa yajna it is named after nachiketa nachiketa yajna it is called in katopanishad then the third thing third thing then because he is happy to give it third thing he says now i want to know a very important thing what happens after the death Yama is puzzled. This is a very serious question for a young boy like that. He said, "This is not a thing for you. Even devatas will not be able to understand this thing." The boy says, "That's why I want to know from you. You are the right person to tell me this. So I want you to give me this." This man says, "I will give you whatever you want. The luxuries, the life, the pressures, the land, all those things, and your long life. All that matter. You know, after long life, what happens? I'll die again. I'll come back to the same point." after all these luxuries i will again come back to the same point so i need an answer for that question all these things are transitory for some time they are there afterwards they are not there so what do i do with them this after we are testing him that this boy has that capacity has really reached a level to understand this question then he starts narrating what happens after that and that cut open shit say takes us to those levels Yeah, the important thing is, even when he said he has given him three bones, when a bone is given, ask her. He is asking the man to understand. First of all, take away, you know, trying to divert his attention because it is not an easy thing. Whether the boy is ready or not, he wanted to know. So after testing him for a while, Yama finally accepts his capacity to teach him this. This is in the atomship. Like that, when you want to reach the goal, see in our Advaita philosophy, see mostly. we are following that advaita philosophy for when there is no second whatever is there me i am there everywhere and everybody is there in me so that is the ultimate this thing this ultimate idea of one person pervading everywhere one soul pervading everywhere and every soul pervading everywhere how does one realize this so for that realization can come after going through a certain processes these processes are the things that we notice today in the in the name of religion by various gurus various temples various mats they make us go through these processes if you get filtered out of this to reach the highest level says stavakra says to janak maharaj you can realize it now here in this world it is possible stavakra says this stavakra is also another instant so when you want to realize that you have to come to that stage <coughs> he makes janak maharaj get that realization subsequently we hear lot of dialogue between janaka and agyavalkya on various aspects of self realization and other things that's a different story the point here to be understood is religion is not simply a set of beliefs 
as far as our understanding is concerned, religion is a set of practices aimed at conducting you to a very high level of self-realization. When you go to a temple, they say you do parikrama of the temple. Why do you do that? Three rounds, four rounds, some people do 108 rounds. Why do they do that? Each parikrama, while thinking about the God, you are purifying your mind. You are removing the dirt and dust from the mind so that you finally start concentrating on the deity. Yeah. So each one of these things are created, are prepared and given to us by the elders and the monies and saints so that we have certain tools to reach the ultimate goal. So whatever we see in terms of religion, these are all the tools. Sometimes they might take a, an exaggerated notion, but ultimate what is there in it and inherently is that you will understand religion by understanding these practices. Ultimately, every religion has its own ultimate goal of realizing the God or reaching the God. In our case, in the Advaita philosophy, we say that that God is in you. It is in you. You are you. You can realize it. That lady, the householder with Dharma Vyadha, how did they get that knowledge about this uh, Muni who burnt the uh, bird? Because of their sadhana, because of their effort on the direction, they were able to get a consciousness about what is happening around the world, what is happening elsewhere. That automatically has come. An ordinary householder is able to get it. So these examples are given to us to show that these things are achievable. So it means Hindu religion, when you say Advaita philosophy, is not a matter of belief. It is a matter of experience. That is the important. It's a matter of everyone can experience that. It is not that only X, Y, or Z will realize that. Everyone will experience that. We have seen a Vasista, you have seen a Valmiki coming from what communities? So people have put in that effort, irrespective of how their caste or creed, they have achieved these things. Now, these examples are told in the religion for us to have that self realization. In a very broad framework of Sanatana Dharma, even dharma of what we discussed a short while ago becomes part of that. That gives you the secular outlook in a way, in the normal sense. For a day-to-day -day living, how do you conduct yourself? How do you relate yourself to the society? There is a one small story. Montgomery, who, who, who is the founder of the Montgomery system of schools, convent schools, when she was alive, she visited one of our schools in India. She saw children playing. And there is one boy, six years old boy, sitting and trying to do something. This lady became curious. He goes to that boy and asks him, what are you doing while every other, everybody else is playing around? He's the boy says, you see, there is a small ant here. Ant, A-N-T, ant. <coughs> It broke one of its legs. It's not able to move. I am trying to create a small path by using his fingers. He is drawing in the sand and he's creating a furrow, a small way, and conducting this ant to get into that so that when he goes in that furrow, people, when they walk here, it will not be hurt, it will not die. A six year old boy visualizing the pains of an ant. And finding a solution to that, she was amazed. She said immediately, this boy must be coming from a Hindu family. So a Hindu family is able to inculcate that type of thing about its environment, about other animals, about living creatures. So when we say we sustain ourselves, we are talking of not only sustaining ourselves at the individual level, we are about sustaining the universe, including all its ramifications, the Jal Jeevu. All of them, the Parvat, the mountain, the seas, the rivers, all are part of this universe. We are able to sustain that. In the philosophy, in the Western philosophy, Western philosophy gives them an opportunity. Rather, you know, it tells the nature is meant to be exploited by you. When Columbus was going to America, the direction given by Pope then, it is written in uh, 
recent uh, one of his books he says you should go and conquer those lands exploit them and somebody comes in the way kill them pope says this so we we don't say that our gurus don't say that no guru says that if krishna advised arjuna in gita to take up the arms to do the things he is talking about swadharma your your dharma as a warrior he is to put down the evil now the all of them are representing evil there that evil has to be put down in the kshatra dharma not for just for the sake of killing the world has to be clean of these evils that's one of the responsibilities given to the kshatra dharma so therefore our our philosophy tells us that we have to think of everybody that's why we use the word vasudhaika kutumbakam we are not thinking about ourselves in our shlokas we say that so lokas samasta sukhino bhavantu so this is the philosophy ultimate philosophy which gives us if you break it down as religious practices on a day to day basis and the secular practices in the name of dharma our duty and in dharma you have the dharma related to family dharma related to parent dharma related to wife dharma related to children why did they say in the vanaprastha vanaprastha you go after completing your responsibility of settling your children and having grandchildren also it means to perpetuate the lineage you should also ensure that your grandchildren come there before you go to vanaprastha it means you have discharged your responsibility in the secular world for sustaining this universe for sustaining this world you have done that responsibility and go there start doing something towards the society or something towards yourself so it means a secular life there is nothing like religion in that so therefore the overall objectives of the society overall objectives of the hindu philosophy are to be divided into dharmic responsibilities of on a day to day basis for all of us and the religious practices for reaching the higher goal if you are not uh, if the time is up i think uh, uh, we will we we'll, i'll just close it by one or two words we have five more minutes sir five five more minutes we are talking about dharma or sanatan dharma sanatan dharma what is sanatan dharma in terms of a definition for sanatan dharma again n number of definitions are available to us but then one i picked up here is this eternal natural way sanatan dharma eternal natural way understand the words it's eternal and natural way is many things it is the spiritual path it is a culture a community a world view a philosophical system a way of being and a total civilization so you can see it's very difficult to get that type of exhaustive definition for another religion so this sanatan dharma can be treated as having two branches for our common understanding the dharma for secular life the practices that are necessary to be practiced and the second component is the religious practices for realizing those goals the religious practices also purifies the person more and more and to that extent it also helps him in discharging the responsibilities as on the dharmic side also so they are mutually dependable though apparently they look like mutually independent they are not independent as such they have a dependency of one on the other our practices if i am an honest person i will do this how do i become an honest person to a spiritual practice certain value system i become an honest person as an honest person i discharge my responsibility in an honest manner so the values in which i am brought up gives me the foundation or background to do the dharma for myself and my community and for my country and at the same time individual level for me to progress in spiritual manner it gives us the opportunity to when i am honest i also try to be honest to myself whether i know anything else or ever i am boasting it's an honest explanation here so i close with one telugu padyam it is from bharthuhari subhashitam it's translated from there telivi yukinta leni era truptudanai karibhangya sarvamun telisidanantu viharinchiti tolli ipudu ujjwala matulaina పండితుల సన్నిధి ఇంచుక బోధశాలినై తెలియని వాడనై మరగితి గతమయ్య నితాంత గర్వమున్ వాట్ ఇట్ మీన్స్ ఈస్ వెన్ ఐ డిడ్ నాట్ నో ఎనీథింగ్ ఐ డోంట్ నో మచ్ ఐ మూవ్ లైక్ ఏ రోగ్ ఎలిఫెంట్ 
as if I know everything else. But in the presence of learned persons having learned something, then I realize I don't know anything. All my pride and other proud and other things have gone away, and I started behaving in a normal manner. So in your presence now, I am that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for such an insightful, thought-provoking ideas about the concept of dharma and religion. So now we are opening it up for discussion and comments and your questions. I request the participants who have questions kindly see that you are located at a calm place. There is no background noise. And if feasible, please switch on your camera while asking questions. Keep your questions crisp and to the point. And others in the group as well can add to what is already discussed about dharma. And if you would like to answer a question also, please feel free. You can use the hand raise option and we would come one by one to each one of you. So who would like to go first? Let me check it here. Is there any question from someone? I saw a hand raised. They've again lowered it. OK, so if others do not have a question, I have quite a few. So but I would like others to raise a question. And this has been a very important topic, dharma versus religion. This is also a part of public discourse. Uday, sir, uh, Dr. Uday Chaudhary ji, uh, please proceed, sir. Uh, I have only a. Uh basic question in mind while we explain about our uh, sanatana dharma and also religion as a part of perhaps embracing that also the theoretical explanation as uh, sir has given is fantastic and we all agree with it and it gives a sense of exaltation in us but if you look at the, our history there has been an equally strong opposition to it starting right from the pre-Vedic times and the some kind of opposition to some of its contents came at the time of the development of Buddhism and later also Sikhism, they made objection to some practices of it. So my question is, why it is that when they took an objection to only a, some part of the practices or philosophy of Hinduism, which may form only 1%, they ignored all other 90% good things about it and concentrated only on some apparently bad thing about uh, dharma, which is uh, even happening today, as you must have seen in uh, Dhanidhi, Stalin uh, highlighting some aspects without uh, uh, you know, knowing about it completely. So perhaps is it not a kind of failure on part of the uh, people who practice Sanatan Dharma, who are at the helm of affairs in creating an atmosphere that all the questions are answered beyond any reasonable doubt, and such kind of scenario doesn't happen. That's my question. Over. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a very important question, Chaudhriji. Now, one is Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism. All these are called Indian religions. And they, all of them, if you critically examine, are the offshoots of Sanatana Dharma. Maybe they have concentrated on a few particular things. For instance, Buddha did not talk about God. It doesn't mean that he negatived God. He said, let us not talk about it. He saw some problems in the society. And he came out with a philosophy. And you know, the most important thing related to Buddhism is called the Ashtanga Marga. So people, you know, because of certain practices at that time, they were vexed with the Vedic culture maybe. And, you know, he has come out with certain approaches which are appealing to the people. Then he went around canvassing for them, canvassing with their kings, everybody else. Sanatana Dharma has no practice of canvassing for itself. It doesn't canvass itself. So. Subsequently, you also notice that the same Buddhism, Jainism, Jainism, still it is relevant to some extent in our country, it is still prevalent. Buddhism has gone to other countries and Buddhism is not much prevalent today. 
Now, what, what happened by the time Sankaracharya came into the picture? He found the bad effects of these Buddhism already, which is only a couple of hundred years old. Whereas Sanatana Dharma, its eternal thing, certain bad practices have kept into it over a period of time. In, a, in some of these new religions, these bad practices have come in, in the matter of few hundreds of years. So therefore, he reinterpreted Upanishads for giving us Advaita philosophy. So when you gave the Advaita philosophy, what it means? There is no difference between you and the Harijana or so-called Dalit anybody. The soul is same. Vivekananda says, was there an occasion for you to shed a tear about seeing the conditions of these people? You start shedding those tears, you are cleansing the present society. You don't need a law to help somebody. The Daivic qualities which I said will contain all these things. Charity is one of them. So people lived where large number of people were living like that, it helped to sustain it. But still it is sustained so far. It has not been swept by the Abrahamic religions like Christianity or Islam. It's because still it is practiced to a large extent. It is able to withstand the rigors of that. Yes, over a period of time, some of those things were there. Bad practices have crept in, therefore the offshoots. You can also look at it as a positive aspect that this society, this country has in its, its own self-cleansing mechanism. They, it means we did not make it Vedic religion a so rigid religion that everybody should follow it. If it were to be like a Christianity or a Islamic religion, Buddhism would not have come or Jainism would not have come or Sikhism would not have come. The country, the eminence gave the opportunity, freedom to choose. That's the greatest thing. That freedom to choose has helped in cleansing the society also. And people have come over a period of time. Adi Shankaracharya has come. When again Hinduism was threatened by these things, during Vijayanara Empire, there was that Vijayaranda Maharshi, Sankaracharya of Sringeri Peter. Then further, if you come down, there was Samadha Ramadas helping Shivaji. And you further come down to our own times, there is Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, who used Vivekananda as his tool to bring about awareness about Advaita philosophy. So therefore, the country has a mechanism of correcting it, and it has brought about saints and great people to bring in certain elements of practices so that it is sustained. It has sustained because of that. Yeah, people, you know, Stalin, Udayanadi, Stalin may say something nonsense. All that is because of the Ramaswami Nayakar philosophy. They cannot politically sustain without abusing others. Abusing others is bad in Sanatana Dharma. Because he doesn't believe it, he abuses everybody else. The chap doesn't know anything about it. Where are those practices today? Country has taken a constitution through which some of them have been abolished. Hindu code bill has come when certain the practices have been totally eliminated through law. But we are still struggling to get the uniform civil code for everybody. So, it's true. In one point to answer the question of Chaudhriji, is that there were certain bad practices that tend, which resulted in the coming of these things. I will also see that as a positive thing. It's like you know, in an organization, if you gather fact, organization crumbles. So you have to find ways and means of shedding that fact once in a while. So all the ma management changes, change management practices are about that only in the organizational philosophy, corporate organizations. So similarly, we, we gathered certain bad practices in course of time because of selfish elements. Human mind is selfish, it's possible. And those things had to be shed. So somebody else took upon that responsibility and it has come. It has survived. It is there in a big way in Thailand. It is still there in J Japan and also there in China. Because what they found in this is far superior to what they have in them. Because a, a, an approach superior to Buddhism and Jainism has come here because therefore it has not continued to exist in India at the same level. That's a, that's a difference. Why it is there in those countries in a big way? Why it is not there here? It is comparable to whatever is existing there. 
So this is far superior to Buddhism, is far superior to probably their local practices, religious practices. Whereas in India, the Advaita philosophy pioneered by Shadi Shankaracharya has become much more important, appealing to everybody across the country because he toured the whole country. Therefore, Buddhism has not sustained itself because of its bad practices and other things. Totally uh, sort of, you know, irresponsible behaviors on the part of the Mats and Sanghas and all that. So th that's the clear cut uh, picture that can come. Udhanidhi may say anything. It doesn't matter, you know. It is just only playing to the gallery. Yes, somebody has to uh, sort of, you know, we have all, I have also one of the signatories who has signed a petition to the president on this statement made by him. I, I assented my signature also to that petition. So that's a different thing. Any other question? Uh, sir, I have a question on this. Please. Uh, while uh, in my understanding from your speech about, uh, for your, from ideas about dharma versus religion, dharma being the larger umbrella, the principles, the fundamentals about the conduct, character, uh, duty, etc. And religion probably more of uh, more ritualistic, more personalized, more towards uh, uh, the the vekti to uh, samasti to parmesti uh, uh, generalizing this now uh, we say that uh, within the umbrella of hinduism uh, there are so many ways uh, so there are different ways people choose in especially the, the way uh, even their ideas at the philosophical level dvait uh, vedanta dvait vedanta then qualified dvait uh, all those aspects are there so at at sometimes it looks like uh, when you can adopt for everything, you stand for nothing. Certainly in dharma, uh, there are few fundamental principles which are followed by all Indic religions. And in religion, there are certain aspects which are specific to that religion. Uh, but dharma gives a base to coexist. Now, in this uh, uh, scenario, uh, for a youngster who might be confused, what is Hinduism? Because everything exist in Hinduism, in the umbrella of Hinduism, would you uh, suggest us some of the key aspects, core principles, where there is no compromise, where uh, they have very clear idea that this is falling under Hinduism and this is not falling under our idea of dharma. I'm talking about the dharmic aspect, not the religious aspect. Yeah, few core ideas, if you say, one is belief in karma siddhanta. Belief in Karma Siddhanta. And then you know you you also follow these uh, fourfold aspects of you know Brahmacharya, hmm. Garhasya, Vanaprastha, and Sanyasya is for conducting yourself in a particular manner. And then another guiding principle is Dharma Kama Moksha for these four and also you believe in sort of there is one soul which pervades everybody you see in a lighter way bible says love thy neighbor but bible does not say why love the, love thy neighbor or why i should love the neighbor but why there is no answer in the bible it's a dictum, that's all. But Hindu philosophy has an answer to that question. The reason is, Hindu philosophy says, the soul which is existing in the neighbor and yourself is same. So in loving the neighbor, you are only loving yourself. So that's the reason why you should love the neighbor. Neighbor are for anybody else. The same Atma is pervading everywhere. So therefore, there cannot be differentiation. The Atma has chosen that body. Why that body? Because of the karma. I assume a body because of my previous karma. So I believe in that. So I come to this. But at the same time, should I go by only karma? Will Hinduism say that I am I am sort of you know condemned to my karma? No. It says by doing a certain aspects of dharmic things, you can relief, get relief out of the consequences of the karma. It means you are you are having some problems because of the karma. Some of these problems, small things, can be overcome 
by continuous practice of really certain religious practices it can give you provide some relief so if you sort of you know believe in that this is hinduism hinduism in all other manifestations you know other various other if you clinically observe you will get all these elements there buddhism also believes in karma siddhanta Though it doesn't talk about God, it believes in Kanasi Dhanta. Yeah, and so do Jainism. Jainism. So therefore, these, these are all, you know, some guru comes and basing on his exposure and his experience, probably he finds certain amount of elaboration or contraction of some of these principles are necessary to put them in an acceptable manner. The Jagat Guru, right now, you know, Jiggy Vasudev, he is going around the world and sort of, you know, he is narrating, he is giving interpretation to the people, to the youngsters. Basing on his understanding of it. Nobody stopped him. There is no Pope or there is no one Dharmakarta here to say that what you are telling is nonsense. That freedom of choice of individual path is the greatest strength of this religion for it to have been sustained over the centuries. See, Christianity came to this country, Islam came to this country. Though by force or otherwise some people are converted to their religions, why the whole country has not become either Islamic or Christian? It's because people compared what is an offer, what is our menu, and what is the menu that they have given to us, spiritual menu. I mean, so they saw it, it, it is something, nothing compared to what we have already. So where do I go? Where do I leave my sadharma? So that itself shows the strength of the country's philosophy which has sustained it notwithstanding the invasions notwithstanding the efforts made to clean it up in the 17th century some people came to uh, near tirupati this is recorded uttu lankateshwara was a great journalist noted journalist he is no more he was a friend of mine he was narrating one day some three four uh, People have come with the attire of a Brahmin attire, looking Gora color and all that, you know, very red color, fair color. So local people ask, who are you? They said, we are Roma Brahmins, Roma Brahmalam, coming from Rome, Brahmins coming from Rome. <laughs> you see, so they, they, they said they adopted these type of techniques in 17th century. And these things have not stopped even now. They continue. But our effort to practice our religion, carry it forward to the next generation, create an environment at home so that they get induced. Now, these are our responsibilities as elders in the house. And then similarly, in colleges and schools, those teachers have to teach them about these values, what this country has given you in terms of values, our belief systems. So, instance have to be told why this, why not this. So, answer this why this in this manner. So, it has sustained you. So, we have to start, it's our responsibility to carry forward this heritage, this spiritual heritage to the generations, next generations. It's not only the family property, but this heritage also has to be conveyed to generations, next generations. That is done by practice. If you don't practice at home some of these things and ask your children to practice, it is not going to happen. It will not happen. Thank you, sir. So, I hope you have answered your question. <laughs> yes, sir. So, what I found is like karma siddhanta is the one aspect, chatur ashram is another aspect which kind of forms the foundation of uh, key dharmic principles in or Indic religions. And then uh, dharma, artha, kam, moksha. And then one soul or atman pervading all. Yes. Therefore, we, we respect all. We are below no one but above no one. And then uh, the last one is freedom to choose, and then the last uh, an advice that we must uh, uh, we must propagate it through our conduct and not just by talking about it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Prashanti yeah. has a question. Prashanti, yeah. you can please proceed. Namaste, Prashanti ji. Unmute ji. Namaste, Namaste. Namaste. Whether dharma prevails uh, religion, the religion contains dharma equa. Question and the religions, Sunai, pretty religion, the Okavella Dharma Mundun Teganaka, 
మన హిందూయిజం అనేది ధార్మికంగా ఎందుకు ఉంది ధర్మాంగ్ when they are complimenting with each other you cannot say these five fingers are there which finger is great you cannot say that but if you want to put a fist all the five fingers are needed so they are complimenting each other to form a fist to get the strength out of you so religion and dharma are complementary in our philosophy they are not competing you cannot put one of the if in a broad sense religion also prepares people to behave in a dharmic manner if you are continuously preparing uh, conducting yourself in dharmic manner you are also growing spiritually directly so therefore there is no competition between us. every every other religion has may have their own ways you see if you say ittihad is their dharma islam has two components one is the religious component another is the political component political islam sanatan dharma is no political islam political sanatana there is no politics in it whereas islam succeeded when it became political and started invading countries and converting countries one after the other so we never had this occasion and we never talk about such a, such conquests similarly uh, sort of you know christianity why the world wars have come whose religion was it the people who fought the world wars when millions of people have died which dharma enabled them to kill people like that why hitler started killing jews first so the whole prevailing environment creates that type of ecosystem for them to indulge in those things <coughs> why there is a war today continuously for the last two years ukraine and russia which created a lot of problems you take your own subcontinent the wars that you faced not even one war was waged by us we were defenders we were not offenders except one of the 71 war to liberate bangladesh that's also in a way survival because huge influx of bangladeshis were coming to yourself and the country cannot take them more more and more in at that time so you have to defend yourself and that's the only solution that they found at that time so there is no competition between two these are not uh, competent like that they are complementary yes so prashanti ji you got the answer they are complementary not about one each other you are on mute prashanti ji no. because uh, there are number of uh, conversations uh, conversations means uh, conversions of religion so whether they have to follow their uh, religion or dharma dharma is a common or prevailing for all these things that was my question no no, no. this question Thank is uh, that's not the point if you are following uh, your religion invariably you are also following your dharma because dharma becomes a, a component of the overall religious philosophy see this when people like einstein had to think on these lines a scientist like einstein there are any number of those people very well whose life was in science but towards the end of the life their life they started seeing what hinduism has taught in a sanatan dharma bhagavad gita upanishads what this teaching is you know very seriously way of all that arnold time we says the first chapters of the world civilization and culture is written by western society the last chapter is going to be written by india so we are going to conclude that's what he says a great historian from british okay next thank you sir namaste, namaste sir chal baagundi sir okati first point సెకండ్ పాయింట్ ఏంటంటే వీళ్ళ మన ప్రశాంతి గారు వీళ్ళు అడిగినట్టే మన సారీ వివేక్ మోడీజీ అడిగినట్టే 
నెక్స్ట్ సెషన్ కంపారిటివ్ అంటే మీరు చాలా చోట్ల యూ హ్యావ్ కంపేర్డ్ విత్ అదర్ ఫెయిత్స్ ఆర్ అదర్ రిలీజియన్స్ ఆర్ అదర్ వేస్ ఆఫ్ లివింగ్ కానీ కంపారిటివ్ అంటే టోటల్ సెషన్ ఏ కంపారిటివ్ గా చేస్తే కొంచెం ఇంకా ఇంకా ఎఫెక్టివ్ గా మాకు మైండ్ లో కూర్చుంటుంది అని సో ఈ కాంటెక్స్ లో కొంచెం కంపారిటివ్ గా ఇవ్వగలిగితే అంటే ఈ దీంట్లో ఇట్లా ఉంది కదా దీంట్లో ఇట్లా ఉంది ఇదే ఆస్పెక్ట్ ని వీళ్ళు ఇట్లా చెప్తున్నారు ఇది వీళ్ళ దగ్గర ఇది లేదు ఇది ఇక్కడ ఉంది ఈ గ్యాప్స్ ఉన్నాయి అంటే గ్యాప్స్ మనకి తెలిస్తే మన దగ్గర ఉన్న దాన్ని అప్రిషియేట్ చేయగలుగుతామని అనిపిస్తుంది సార్ happened today in today's session some of the key ideas uh, shri mameshwar ji mentioned about dharma right from code of honor to uh, one which holds maintains keeps sustains then ideas about uh, sanatan dharma uh, eternal natural way and an encompassing uh, definition of it which covers uh, culture philosophies uh, and civilization uh, a very broad umbrella of it he also uh, told us about uh, the the clear division uh, what is dharma and what is religion how dharma talks about the conduct the the behavior part of it our duty part of it and uh, the the development of a character doing our duties no matter what work we do our dharma allows us to live a life within that frame and still reach our spiritual journey uh, or grow in our spiritual path also he mentioned about uh, Uh, various uh, 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 various aspects about uh, dharma artha kaam moksha dharma being the foundation of artha kaam and moksha and uh, then from gita chapter 6 the qualities the devic qualities and asuric qualities he also mentioned about the nachiketa story and also the story about the butcher and the and the rishi who was very angry and very uh, egoistic about his uh, his knowledge and his tapasya Uh, about the astavakra and janaka uh, co- the the conversation and then uh, uh, some aspects which we discussed uh, about dharma vis-a-vis religion and some other religion so uh, i think uh, quite a few concepts have become more clear and uh, as suggested by our seniors we would uh, consider taking one more session on this uh, also suggest all of you to kindly uh, subscribe to our youtube channel it goes by our name samskriti foundation and uh, in the video which is we have shared in the group if you click that below that you can see the, the channel uh, name and just click on this and subscribe so uh, with this uh, we come to the close of this session thank you so much sir for uh, your insightful uh, address on this uh, very important topic of dharma and how it is distinct with religion now we will be closing with shanti mantra uh, i request uh, prashanti ji to chant shanti mantra we will op- all keep our microphone in mute and uh, chant it and then close the session dhanyawad prashanti ji shanti mantra thik namaste sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukha bhad bhave ధన్యవాద్ నమస్తే అండి